Starting with version 3, Dart introduced a feature called pattern matching, which is a new form of syntax. If you have prior experience with languages like Kotlin, Swift, or destructuring in JavaScript, you might have felt right at home with patterns when Dart added them. And the rest of this episode may only be a refresher. But if you're like me, and Dart was your first programming language with pattern matching, then the new syntax may have been pretty confusing at first. Or it might still be. So if that's you, settle in and get ready to get comfortable with patterns. So what are patterns? I think of them as specific shapes that data in my application may or may not match. Typically, Dart developers use patterns to detect whether or not a piece of data conforms to that pattern's shape. That's called pattern matching. And then optionally, if it does, use the pattern to extract portions of the data into new variables, which is called destructuring. First, let's look at how to spot a pattern in Dart code, and then we'll walk through matching and destructuring. Patterns come in a handful of varieties that collectively cover all the types of data that could exist in your application. This means there's const patterns, which match against themselves, list patterns, which match against lists, and then recursively match against each element in the pattern, map patterns, which match against maps, and then recursively match any keys specified in the pattern, object patterns, which match instances of a certain type, and then optionally some or all of their properties, wildcard patterns, which always match, and lastly, record patterns, which match the entirety of another record. A quick note on records. They're a new data type also added in Dart 3 alongside patterns. Records are an immutable collection of arbitrary objects declared with parentheses. Records can hold mixed data types and are type safe on a per item basis. Now, back to patterns. Patterns can also be combined using logical operators like and, or, and parentheses. For example, here I'm combining pattern one and pattern two using various operators, just like you might with expressions. Let's dive into an example using the record pattern we saw earlier. This whole thing is a pattern, but each place that says sub pattern could be another pattern. So maybe sub pattern one is a const pattern that checks for the string ABC. And sub pattern two is a list pattern that checks for two integers, nine and 10. But that's pretty specific. What if you wanted to check whether it was a record containing any string and a list of any two integers? Well, for that, it's time to look more closely at the object pattern. I mentioned earlier that the role of object patterns is to match instances of a certain type and optionally, some or all of their fields. Object patterns look like an unnamed constructor of the given type, even for objects that don't have an unnamed constructor. This means that for our previous example, we'd write this, using three object patterns nestled inside other patterns. I also mentioned that object patterns can go beyond mere type checking and examine properties on the instance. To do that, pick any attribute on the type. This could either be a plain field or a computed property and add it to your faked constructor looking object pattern. So that's what a pattern is, a shape that data may or may not conform to and which can be combined with other patterns or logical operators, just like how expressions can be combined with other expressions. So how do we use these things? Remember, patterns have two possible jobs, matching data and possibly destructuring that data into smaller variables. The destructuring part depends on a successful match. So let's start with pattern matching. In Dart, pattern matching happens in what are called refutable contexts, which means a place where data can be evaluated to either match the shape of a pattern or not. Typically, that means an if case statement a switch statement or a switch expression. The switch statement and expression are more common, so let's start there. Patterns in a switch statement look like this. And because this is a typical switch statement, it can do all the cool things, like having guard clauses, which introduce additional requirements for control flow to move into the case block, and exhaustiveness checking, which prevents you from accidentally omitting possible scenarios. For more info on switch statements and exhaustiveness checks, Visit the links in the video description.
Switch expressions are similar, but they collectively produce a value and look slightly different. The third refutable context where Dart developers use patterns is the if case statement, which looks like this. The following code blocks all do the same thing. Determine whether a color value is a primary color. The last big thing to know about patterns is destructuring, which is that act of pulling values out of the data that matched the pattern into new standalone variables. This can take place in one of two places, on the left side of an assignment operator or within a matching clause. The left side of the assignment operator can be in the form of a variable declaration or variable assignment. Sometimes functions use records to return multiple values, which you can immediately destructure into separate variables. The next flavor of destructuring can happen with object patterns, typically in the refutable context of an if case statement or switch. Imagine a function that classifies data as unit circles or not unit circles. Super useful function, I know. Start by adding an if case statement and comparing data against an object pattern for our circle class. So far, this just performs an old fashioned type check against the data variable. But this is where things get interesting. Sprinkle in a little destructuring by specifying any property on the circle class. In our case, we wanna look at its radius property. And remember, this works independently of what constructors this circle class has, because although object patterns look like constructors, they are not. Next, declare a variable where Dart will extract and place the value of the data's radius if it is, in fact, a circle. Now we're pattern matching and destructuring. But we still haven't checked whether the radius is one, which is the definition of a unit circle. To do that, add a guard statement we mentioned earlier using the when keyword. Another valuable use case for combining pattern matching and destructuring is for simultaneously validating and using JSON. This function efficiently checks whether the data variable has two keys, username and age, which are a string and integer respectively, and if so, it returns them as fields in a user object. Look at what that same functionality would require without patterns. So that's patterns. They define specific shapes to which other data in your application may or may not conform. I'm gonna be honest with you. Patterns were pretty challenging for me to wrap my mind around when I first encountered them. If you also find them tricky, be sure to check out the full resource list in the video description below. And for everything else on Dart, head to dart.dev.